For what might seem like just a bunch of small improvements, there's actually a lot of details in tvOS 26 that are getting a lot better, and it's making me really excited for this next release. I'm Eric Wielander, and welcome to my channel where we talk a lot about Apple and smart home tech. And while Apple's making a lot of small improvements to tvOS, they're actually doing so on top of a bunch of features you might not know that your Apple TV can already do. So with each of these new features, I'm gonna highlight some ways they work already in tvOS 18, and then also how they're getting better in tvOS 26. So by the end of it, we can all be tvOS power users. And stay tuned to the end of the video where we'll talk about whether or not you should upgrade to the public beta of tvOS this summer or wait for the complete release this fall. Now, starting off with AirPlay 2 speakers, you can now have your Apple TV maintain a permanent connection to not just HomePods or HomePod minis, but any AirPlay 2 speaker. Now, for the longest time, if you hold down the TV button to get to Control Center, which might be new to you if you haven't used Control Center before, you'll see a little AirPlay icon there already in tvOS 18, and you can go ahead and AirPlay the audio from your Apple TV to any collection of AirPlay 2 speakers that you already have in your home. But if you turn off the Apple TV or unplug it or anything else, then that connection will stop and won't be restarted when the Apple TV boots back up. Now with tvOS 26, when the Apple TV starts back up, it will reestablish the AirPlay 2 connection with those speakers and you can use them like normal again. Now, I'm always a little skeptical about these things where lots of different speakers are being pulled together via Wi-Fi, but there are some really cool uses for it. Let's say, for example, you have a TV where you might want to get some extra audio from the TV out in a different area of your home. For example, we have our TV in the living room, but then we have a Sonos Move 2 in the kitchen, and that works with AirPlay 2. So by adding that speaker into the living room sound system, you get much clearer TV audio over in the kitchen, as well as this portable battery-powered AirPlay 2 speaker we could move to other parts of the home as it makes sense for having people over or some kind of party or whatever we're doing. One other detail to keep in mind is this is for AirPlay 2 speakers. There are some older speakers out there that just support Apple AirPlay and not AirPlay 2 and that won't work here. And just big picture on this, I'm really happy that Apple is continuing to work on making AirPlay 2 that much more useful in all kinds of new ways in our homes. Now moving on to the big banner update across all of Apple's platforms this year, it's their liquid glass UI. And you get that in tvOS with things like Control Center, as well as then the quick access to home scene controls. And that's actually another good tip here because you can hold down the TV button, get to control center as we talked about in the last one, but then you can also go over to the top of control center, select the home icon, and then you get some controls for your home, like some smart home scenes, as well as viewing your home kit cameras. So it can be a nice way to check on who's at the front door, has that delivery arrived yet, while you're watching TV. Another big benefit with Liquid Glass is the redesigned side menus. I think they just look really nice and actually pop in a way that they just didn't before. One other detail that you might notice is that icons have a little bit more dimension, especially some of those shipping already from Apple, like the new Sing feature we'll talk about in a minute, as well as the Photos app icon, the computer icon, and the settings icon. As you wiggle your finger around the trackpad, you'll see those kind of shift in a way that older icons don't. Another place where liquid glass I think looks really cool is the new playback controls. And these are for video across Apple's platforms. Now, moving on to profiles, did you know that you can already create multiple iCloud account profiles to use the same Apple TV? Imagine that more than one person using an Apple device. These people should go like help the iPadOS team maybe. But anyways, with tvOS 26, they're making this even better 
because you can now show that profile selection screen on startup. You see, if you turned on the Apple TV previously, you might not notice that up there in the corner is someone else logged into the TV. I mean, maybe you'd see some different streaming service icons, but I could see how you might then accidentally be watching stuff on someone else's account and then getting your watch history mixed with theirs in ways you might not want. So with tvOS 26, there's a new option to every time the Apple TV starts up, show the profile selection screen, and that helps reduce the chance that you accidentally start using someone else's account. Now, unfortunately, there's no way that I've seen yet to limit the access of these accounts with some kind of a passcode or maybe proximity or confirmation on an Apple Watch or iPhone of that iCloud user. You need that to set up the profile initially, but this is not something you would wanna use for parental controls. Apple has a separate way to establish content restriction pins on Apple TV in another part of settings. Apple also announced a new sign-in API for developers, so if you switch to a different profile, then it can automatically sign in that iCloud user to all their favorite streaming services, assuming those streaming services support this new API. Now, moving on to karaoke. Did you know that you can not only play Apple Music on your Apple TV, but you can also get lyrics on the big screen as well as beautiful album art, and now with tvOS 26, they're taking that to a whole new level with the Sing experience where you can select the Sing icon on your Apple TV home screen and then choose a song to play and then connect your iPhone and use your iPhone as a mic. And it'll actually act like a karaoke machine where you sing into your iPhone mic and it does some kind of amplification effect with the TV speakers in sync with then you singing with the music. And it'll even do translation and even pronunciation guides depending on the music you're singing. So it makes it way easier to sing things, let's say like, K-pop, even if you don't know Korean. Now, I haven't been able to get this fully working in my setup just yet. I ran into some technical problems with the Wi-Fi for my phone syncing up with the Apple TV, but I imagine that will get worked out. This is all just still in the beta form before it releases to everybody in the fall. You might know that you can use your Apple TV as the primary hub for your smart home. And I think that's a great choice to make an Apple TV in your home be the primary hub for your Apple home. And I've talked more about that in other videos here on the channel. And depending on the model of Apple TV you have, it quite possibly has a thread radio built in, which is a smart home radio that then allows that Apple TV to communicate with all of your thread devices in your smart home. And with tvOS 26, they're upgrading the thread protocol version to 1.4. And this is supposed to improve communication with thread devices and better manage power. So hopefully you get more battery life out of those thread devices around your smart home. And one thing to keep in mind here is that I haven't seen anything about Apple officially announcing this feature, either at WWDC or after that. It was discovered by a bunch of very keen Apple observers, as well as them published by some reputable Apple websites. So it seems pretty clear this is coming with tvOS 26, but it's not really one of the headline features because it's kind of a detailed smart home protocol behind the scenes. Now, did you know that you can actually put your FaceTime conversations on the big screen with your Apple TV by connecting your iPhone with continuity camera and then using that as your camera with your TV to keep up with friends and family via FaceTime. And they're making that better this year with tvOS 26 with contact posters. So if you've seen that on iOS where people can set up a nice picture for their contact image, then those will also come up in tvOS now. And they're also enabling live captions in multiple languages, which could really add some nice accessibility and just understanding between people 
on FaceTime. One other cool related detail is that they're adding call notifications. So well, I haven't seen this actually occur yet in the betas, Apple announced at WWDC that they're adding these call notifications so you should be able to pick up and answer telephone calls from your television, which man, talk about like the ultimate speakerphone. Now you might have noticed in tvOS 18, we got an update with these Snoopy screensavers. They're really cool and they actually do a bunch of just logic behind the scenes to know, oh, it's raining, so we'll play this kind of screensaver of Snoopy in the rain. But also Apple continues to build out their collection of aerial screensavers, which are those kind of eye-catching slow motion drone shots that I've definitely caught myself on more than one occasion just sitting on the couch and watching the aerial screensavers when I probably should have already gone up to bed or whatever, but they're adding more aerial scenes in tvOS 26 from India. And the other cool update here is that in tvOS 18, you are able to turn on and off the categories of aerials. So if you don't want ones from let's say the ocean, you can turn that category off. But now in tvOS 26, you can manually turn on and off individual aerial scenes. So if you don't like the jellyfish, then this is for you because then you can turn off the jellyfish, but then keep, let's say, a bunch of other ocean scenes you really like. So I have three Apple TVs in my home and this one behind me is my primary home hub, which means it's the main control center for my smart home. And spoiler alert, it's running tvOS 26. Now, should you do the same this summer? Well, so far, my experience this summer is that the beta for tvOS is pretty stable. So it might be fun to get early access to some of these features and then give Apple some feedback on things you might want to see different. But at the same time, if you always just like to check out in front of your TV and enjoy it for entertainment and don't like the potential of troubleshooting bugs, then just wait for the public release this fall. There's still all those features in tvOS 18 we talked about that you can take advantage of right away. If you do upgrade your primary home hub, and then you also upgrade, let's say your iPhone or iPad to those public betas, then you get one cool little feature in the home app where if a device goes unresponsive, it'll be able to tell you when it last saw that device and if it last saw that device with a low battery which can help in troubleshooting device issues or things going unresponsive. That said as well, when I first updated to the tvOS 26 beta, I did have a couple of smart plugs go unresponsive and just going around the home, unplugging those, plugging them back in, that seemed to fix it. So no real specific rhyme or reason of specific brands or any issues there. Just I think sometimes when you change things about your primary matter controller, some things can change change with your smart home and maybe go unresponsive. So you might have to do a little bit of that after upgrading, but other than that, it's been pretty smooth sailing. And be sure you don't miss my newsletter over at ericw.org newsletter. Every Sunday, I send what I call the Sunday Scene newsletter with three things in the worlds of Apple or smart home tech that I think are worth your attention. Give this video a thumbs up if you liked it. Subscribe to my channel if you aren't already, and I hope to see you in the next video right over here.